What is up people and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at Redis high availability and replication. High availability for Redis can seem very complicated and daunting. It is very important to understand the type of data you're storing and also reconsider whether you actually even need high availability. In this video I'm planning to lay the foundation of high availability and replication. So to give you the basic understanding of how to get replication going then you can tweak that to suit your needs. So without further ado, let's go. So if you're new to Redis, I've made a video on the basics of Redis, how to get it up and running, how to configure it, persistence, and how to write an application that reads and writes data to and from Redis. Check out the links down below and be sure to check that video out. Now, if you're new to this channel, everything I do is on GitHub. So if you go over to the Docker development YouTube series, GitHub repo, I've made a folder called storage. And for the series, everything I do in the Redis series is under a folder called Redis. I have a readme file in here that shows you how to get Redis up and running, which is basically the first video I've done. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at replication and clustering, which is in the clustering folder. I've created a readme down there. And here's all the steps we're going to be taking a look at today. So be sure to check out the links down below load to the source code so you can follow along. Now the first thing in my readme is we talk about replication. So I have a link to the Redis replication document over here. And if we take a look at the documentation at the base of replication, this excludes high availability. So basically Redis just allows you to run instances as a, like a master slave replication. Replication has three main mechanisms. Now to summarize that the master is basically configured to replicate its data to the other replicas. The replicas is all, are also configured to read the data from the master and ensure that they remain in sync. Now persistence is very important in replication because if the master dies and loses its data, it'll basically start up with an empty data set and replicate that empty data set down to the replicas, which will basically wipe all your data. So it's very important that we configure persistence in this demo. Now the first important part of the replication document is authentication. It is very important to run Redis with a strong password because Redis by default is not configured to use a password so anyone can connect to it. As part of replication, we also have to configure a strong password on each of the replicas and also configure each of the replicas to have a master password. So to showcase this example, we're gonna run three Redis instances. We're gonna run Redis 0, Redis 1, and Redis 2. Now in my readme file, I've shown you the differences of the configuration file for each one of them. This is Redis 0's configuration, Redis 1 configuration, and Redis 2 configuration. Now try to spot the difference here. To set up replication, it's very, very simple. The only difference is between all of them is that the replicas have the slave of key. This tells Redis where to look for the master node. So you can see Redis 1 is a slave of Redis 0. Redis 2 is a slave of Redis 0. So in this example, Redis 0 is the master. The slave of key that we see here here is what makes Redis replication work. This is what tells Redis where the master is and sets up the clustering. So for authentication, we have to run a require pass on each one of the instances. So require pass is basically the password that this Redis will run with. Anyone that wants to connect to this Redis needs to have this password defined. Now, if we take a look at Redis 1 and 2, they also have the key master auth. This is the password used to connect to the master. So this will allow Redis 2 and Redis 1 to connect to Redis 0. The reason why I have the same master auth on the Redis 0 is just in case when we take a look at high availability, we're going to have a scenario where the master might switch to Redis 1 or Redis 2. In that case, we want to make sure that Redis 0 can run as a replica and also connect to other masters. So in my previous video on the basics of Redis, I showcased how to run Redis with a custom configuration file. Since we're going to be running Redis 0, Redis 1, and Redis 2, I've created separate config files for each of the nodes. The way I'd like to start my configuration is to come over to the Redis documentation on configuration and look at the self-documented config for each one of the versions of Redis. So in this example, I took the config from Redis um, version 6, and then I went ahead and pasted it into my folder structure down here. And the changes I've made are summarized over here. 
right here. So on each one of the instances, we basically want to run this configuration. So to show you an example, if I go into Redis one config, we, we hit control F and we search for require pass. We can see we have require password set here on this instance. And we can also search for master auth. And we can see we have the master auth key set in here as well. So this is enough to get replication going with three instances. Now I also mentioned that it's very important to set up persistence on each of the Redis nodes to make sure they persist their data across reboots. So to do that, we take a look at the Redis persistence documents. And in my previous video, I covered the basics of that. It's important to understand that there's two modes of persistence in Redis. The first one is RDB mode, which is basically Redis taking a snapshot of its database and dumping it to the file system on different intervals. This is really good for performance because every time Redis has to dump file to data, it basically uses compute to do so. so the more often you write to the file system, the less performance you're going to get. But the more often you write to the file system, the higher durability you're going to get. So it's a bit of a trade-off. The other mode of persistence is AOF, which stands for append only file. This basically means that every time Redis receives a transaction, it writes that transaction to disk. This gives you much higher durability, but a cost of performance. So it's very important that you firstly understand your workloads and understand what type of persistence you really need. This document lists out the advantages and disadvantages of each mode and the Redis community recommends that you use both types of persistence together. So in this demo, we're going to be setting up RDB persistence as well as append only file persistence. And we're going to write that to a data volume. So to show you the configuration of that, you can hop into any one of the Redis config files and just go ahead and search for dump. And you'll basically find this file called DB file name. Now DB file name is where to put the RDB file or what you want to call that file. And in this example, we're going to call it dump.rdb. That's all you need to enable persistence for RDB mode. If you want to enable AOF mode, all you need to do is come to this file and search for append only and then turn it on. So say append only yes, and then type the append only file name you want to use. The other property that's also very important is DIR. If you search for that, you'll come across the DIR key, which is basically where should Redis write both of those two files. And I'm going to mount a volume into this um, container. So this will allow me to persist the data folder inside Redis on the host. So to summarize the configuration for persistence, you can see here we have a directory we want to write the data to and we have a DB file name for the RDB file and we have enable append only mode and we also put a file name for that. So it's going to write the dump.rdb and the append only.aof into the slash data folder that we're going to persist on as a Docker volume. We then have a summary of the Redis configuration. So Redis 0 is going to be our master. Redis 1 and 2 are going to be replicas and you can see we specified slave of. So Redis 1 will become a slave of Redis 0 and Redis 2 will become a slave of Redis 0. So one master, two replicas. So what I want to do is I want to say slave of Redis 0. I want to grab this value, go to my Redis 1.config. You'll see that it's automatically added replica of here. This is because I ran the cluster before. So you want to make sure you wipe any of these um, existing values and just make that one again slave of Redis 0. So we, we're updating Redis 1 to be a slave of Redis 0. And then I'm going to go into Redis 2 as well. And I'm going to look for that config and update it as well. That will make sure that when our Redis node starts up, that we have our master as Redis 0 and our slaves as Redis 1 and 2. Now it's very important before you run these containers to know that they have to run on the same network. So whether you're running in the cloud or on Kubernetes, make sure these containers can actually talk to one another. So because we're running in Docker, I'm going to create a network called Redis. So I'm going to say Docker network create Redis. And then I'm going to start up each one of these containers on the Redis network. So what I want to do, because my configuration files is in the storage Redis clustering folder, I want to change directory into that folder. So I'm going to say CD change directory into there. And when I do Alice, you can see we have our folder with our configuration separated out. I want to go and run three containers. So I'm going to say Docker run. Um, I'm going to call it Redis 0. You can see I have Redis 0, Redis 1 and Redis 2. And I'm going to start them up on the Redis network. And I'm also going to mount in each config folder respectively. So I'm going to mount in Redis 0 into the Redis 0 container and then 1 as well as 2. And then finally, in the entry point, I'm going to say I want Redis 6.0 and I want to run startup Redis server passing the configuration file that I've mounted in. So it's very easy to run this. All I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of these commands and I'm going to paste them into the terminal. That's going to start up three containers of Redis. I can then do Docker PS and we can see we have three Redis containers up and running. 
So in a previous video, I showcased how to write an application that reads and writes data to Redis. So to test our replication, what we're going to do is run this example application and see if the data gets replicated. So it's very simple. In a new terminal, I'm just going to change directory into the storage Redis applications client folder. You can see on the on the left side here, I have a storage Redis application folder and I have a small Golang client application in here. Once I changed folders, I can go ahead and say Docker build my T, I can tag this image as a Redis client. So I go ahead and paste that. That'll go ahead and build a container image that we can run and access Redis. So to run that application, I say docker run minus IT. I'm going to run it on the Redis network. I'm going to pass in some connection details so this app knows what to connect to. So I'm going to say Redis host is Redis 0 since Redis 0 is our master. I'm going to connect to this port and I'm going to pass in my, my super strong password. I'm going to copy this and let's paste it to the terminal. So now we have an application up and running and if I go to the browser you can see here that we have an application that has stored a counter in Redis every time I refresh this it'll basically increment that counter and write it back to Redis so let's increment it to 20 and now what we want to go and do is go into Redis and make sure the data has been persisted so to test the replication I'm going to open up another terminal and I'm going to go into one of the Redis nodes so in this example let's go into Redis 2 so I'm going to say docker exec minus it Redis 2 and once I'm in I'm going to run the Redis CLI and then I'm going to authenticate so I say auth and I pass in my password that's okay and then to list out the keys I type keys and a pattern so I can just say star and that will list out the key so we can see we have a key called counter stored in here so we can see that the data has now been replicated to our third instance of Redis our application wrote it to Redis 0 and we picked up the key on Redis 2 so that is the basic concept of replication it's very easy to set up replication in Redis but what if the master the fails. By having replication enabled, it doesn't mean you have high availability. It only means that you're able to replicate the data among multiple Redis instances. If the master dies, we actually want to be able to switch out one of the other replicas to become masters. And that is how we achieve high availability. So in Redis, that feature is called the Redis Sentinel. So if we take a look at the Redis Sentinel, the Sentinel is what provides high availability for Redis. So basically, if one of the master dies, the Sentinel's job is to elect a new master. So a couple of features, it has monitoring built in, so it constantly checks the masters and replicas. It has notification service, so it can notify your system admins if there's an issue. It has automatic failover, so it detects when a master is down, and then it fails over to another replica. It's also very important to know that you should run at least minimum of three instances of the Sentinel so not running just two because basically for failover to work there has to be a majority vote on the sentinels to elect a new master so in this example we're going to be running three sentinel services and test the automatic failover i'm going to leave this document with you as it has several examples of different types of scenarios and how the sentinel manages those scenarios and failures now to configure the Sentinel, it's very straightforward. I have a basic configuration that I'm going to showcase today. We basically say we want to run the Sentinel service on port 5000. We then tell it what master to monitor. So we say Sentinel monitor, we give our master a name, and then we say we want it to monitor Redis 0. So we start off our Sentinels by looking at the current master. And we also say what the quorum value should be in the port to monitor that master on. Then we can configure timeout value. So we can say how long should the Sentinel wait for the master before it initializing failover. So if the master is down for longer than 5,000 milliseconds, it'll basically start the failover process. And we can also specify failover timeout, parallel syncs, and the most important one is the authentication password to talk to the master node. So we have to say sentinel auth pass, the name of the master, and the password. So just like I mounted in the Redis configurations into those three Redis containers, I also have specified over on the left here, um, sentinel 0, sentinel 1, and sentinel 2. If you open open up these folders, they're basically uh, separate configuration files. So if we take a look at one of these Sentinel configuration files, you see that um, there's a lot more values in here. That's because the Sentinel has to write values to this file. And when changes happen to the environment, the Sentinel will update this file. So to start from scratch, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the values out of the base configuration. I'm going to go to Sentinel 0. I'm going to remove everything from here and paste our config. I'm then going to repeat the values on Sentinel 1 and I'm going to also do it on sentinel 2. So now that our configuration is ready we can go ahead and start up the sentinel containers. So we can change directory into the clustering folder where our configs are located and then I'm going to say docker run minus d 
to run in background mode and I'm going to start up Sentinel 0, Sentinel 1 and Sentinel 2. You can see I'm mounting each one of the Sentinel configuration folders into each one of the containers and then starting it up in Sentinel mode by saying red is Sentinel and then passing the configuration file. So I'm going to go ahead and copy all of that and I'm going to paste it in the terminal. That's going to run three more containers. So if I do Docker PS, we can now see we have our three Redis Sentinels, we have three Redis instances and our example application. Now the first thing we need to do is check the health of the Sentinel. So we're going to say Docker logs and we're going to look at the logs of Sentinel zero. And when we run this, we want to see the following information. We want to see plus monitor my master. So we can see this one master up and running. It has a plus sign and we can see there's two slaves up and running. We can also see that there are two other Sentinel services in the cluster that it's communicating with. This is important to see this. If you don't, if you do not see this types of output, that means that there's a problem with the Sentinel service and that means your clustering is not going to work. The other thing we can do is go into the Sentinel service. So I can say docker exec minus it Sentinel zero and I'm going to go inside the Sentinel zero container. Once inside, I can run the Redis CLI on the port 5000 and I can type info. We can see a lot of information here about our cluster. But the most important thing is we want to go ahead and query the status of the master. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Sentinel master my master and that's going to give me some information about the master. The most important thing firstly is to make sure that the num other sentinel value is, is correctly updated. So you can see here we have two other sentinels in the cluster making up a, a cluster of three sentinels. If you don't see this that means there's a problem with your sentinel setup and you need to review your configuration. We can also see that a master is up and connected. Now let's go ahead and test the failover process of our cluster. So we know already that we have an example application connected to Redis zero. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and delete the Redis zero container and we should see a new master be elected as well as the replication still remaining intact. So to do that I'm going to say docker ra minus f and I'm going to delete Redis zero. So now our master is down. So if I do docker logs on the sentinel we can confirm this by looking at the logs and we can see that there's been a config update. Um, it's also tried a failover. We can see that it's detected that there's a master down over here and it's gone ahead and switched master to a new instance. It also has new slaves now reported. So the master that was read as zero is now actually a slave. We can also see if we go back to our example application and we refresh this, it will basically be down. This is because the application is configured to write to the master and now the master is down. If we bring that master back up, it's also important to know that the application needs to talk to the new master because the master is the write only and the replicas are read only. So now to test the failover, what I can do is go to my example application application and this time pointed to the new master. So the new master is now Redis 1. So I'm going to go ahead and run my application pointing to the new master. And when we refresh our example application, we can see that it's continued from 20. So the replication made sure that the data was available on all the replicas and the sentinels made sure that uh, when the master is down, it elected a new master. So our application can connect to that new master and continue working. So hopefully that helped you guys understand the basics of replication and how to replicate your data across multiple instances and also help understand the basics of Redis clustering with the Redis Sentinel service and how to ensure your Redis cluster remains highly available. If you like this video, remember to like and subscribe and stay tuned because in a future video, we're going to be taking everything we've learned and we're going to run it on top of Kubernetes. So let me know down in the comments below what sort of videos you'd like me to cover in the future and how you manage Redis yourself. And as always, like and subscribe and until next time, peace.